Y'all want to know what I was made fun of in high school? Wearing cardigans. Yep, that's right, cardigans. The one I'm wearing right now, the one that everyone be wearing right now because of the Y2K trend. Funny how the world works sometimes, seriously. You become what you hate. I have nothing against these girls who made fun of me. I am not anti-woman, I am not misogynistic, I am only anti-bullying. I'm just saying, if you're going to crop your cardigan, at least do it right. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I'm going to teach you how to fix those raw hems into proper seamless hems, depending on your difficulty level and whatever materials you have at home. As with everything in the Cherry Cinematic Universe, every single shot is at least days apart or if not months apart. So that's exactly what happened in this project as well. It all first started when I cleaned out my closet, which was my last last video, and I found this cardigan from my mom. So our first and main victim in this video to be turned into a two-piece is this Uniqlo cardigan from my mom. It's in a really lovely nude pink color and given that it's my mom's size, it's basically perfect for this purpose because there's enough fabric to work with. And welcome to my thrift flip workplace where I can wear whatever I want with zero makeup and we're just gonna focus on the fact that we're gonna DIY. Here's a little tip if you're gonna crop anything, raise your arms and measure where you want it to end so as you can see like here it's way longer just the pin and we're just gonna pin it right where i want it the reason why we do this is simply because we don't want it to be too cropped when we raise our arms ironically i didn't follow my own tip and my cardigan did end up being too cropped don't do what i do and just do as i say <laughs> The much more reliable and preferred method for this is to just wear a crop top over it when you wear it and then just copy the length from there, indicate it with some pins. Just don't forget to put half an inch allowance for your hem. That way, you already have a tried and tested length that you can work with. Now you want to make sure that the fabric stays put and the way you do that is you pin the top and bottom fabric with a lot of pins. You can also close up the buttons if your cardigan has buttons and that would be way easier. This part would also be easier if you have a rotary cutter which looks like this. But unfortunately, as of this time, I don't even have a rotary cutter yet so just do as I do which is use a ruler and just guide your scissor through it. Even if it's the ratchet version, it's still gonna work just the same. Hello everyone! As you can tell, things look very different. <laughs> I have lights, I have a mic, I have lashes. Look at these, things are so nice. It is now June. Here's the top now. It is officially a top. This was where the buttons used to be. Fortunately, it didn't record when I sewed it. So we are now gonna be doing it on this cropped cardigan piece. Here is the cropped cardigan piece. And basically what we're essentially going to be doing is we're going to remove these buttons. Be careful because you might just do this, pin the right sides of the fabric together right here, and just stitch right here, and let's go. These are the things you want to keep in mind when stitching with knitted fabric, which is what most cardigans are made of, specifically when stitching seams. First off, do this with a jersey ballpoint needle. This is a special needle that doesn't have a sharp pointed tip, which means it will not pierce through the knit and destroy it in case that you have to remove the stitches. But if you do want to use a normal needle, that's also fine. Just make sure that your stitches are perfect and you will not remove them ever. Second is, if you can, please use a walking foot. A walking foot's additional feed dogs on the bottom of the foot will just allow the fabric to be slowly sewn in instead of being stretched as you sew. An alternative to this is just by taking your time and not stretching the fabric at all to minimize the wavy look that you get if you do. Lastly, whether you have a ballpoint needle or a walking foot or not, you want to make sure that your stitch length is as low as possible but not close to zero. This is in terms of stitching seams because you want it to be strong, hence the lower number, but you do not want it to be too low that your stitches are so close it will just be more prone to gathering. 
for the stitch width you want it to go as high as you can although this can also contribute to the gathering it really depends on what gear you have and how slow can you go but basically when it comes to seams you just want it to be as wide and as short as possible so that you're sure that the fabric is super tightly sewn together so this is what the shoe top looks like from here you have two options you can type in it if it's too loose or if it kind of fits you're just not you don't feel secure with it you can add straps I did eventually go for straps for my orange top, however, I was unable to film it, but making straps is stupid easy and this is how you do it. Fabric, fold, sew, take a pin on one end, go it through the tube, flip it inside out, boom, strap. Didn't like it, looks chunky, this is what you do. Just sew it and hide the stitch at the back, no need to flip inside out. Attach it to your top with two stitches, one top, one bottom, and then you're done. Personally, this is the only fabric left of my cardigan, so I can't do straps. So I am just going to adjust it, and then basically that's it. You have your troop top. I'm just kidding. We have to hem, <laughs> which is my least favorite part, by the way. So, so first way is to just stitch it regularly. Nothing special. Regular needle with the matching thread, and you just do a straight stitch right along the bottom. And the concept behind that is just gonna hold. The knitted fabric together. Disadvantages of this, it's not gonna look the prettiest, it's also not gonna hold very well as you wear it more and more. But a good thing with this is that it actually looks like a stylistic choice. It looks kind of raw and if you stretch your fabric while you're stitching, it's also going to look like a lettuce hem. So if you are in a pinch or you don't have that much budget, this is the most basic way you can do this and it works well for the most part, especially for just personal use. However, let's also take it up a notch by using a double needle. So basically, a double thread needle is included in most machines. And it works great for knitted fabric because the bottom thread zigzags between the two top threads which gives it some room to stretch as you wear it over your head. It's definitely a better option if your machine has this twin needle, definitely use it to your advantage. Hello and welcome to my new room still actually undergoing construction but I just super super miss stitching and sewing and I really really want to go back to this project. You guys don't see anything going on behind the back of this camera. We're going to film. I already forgot where we were for this project but we were here. The best part is I have new materials from Shopee. Oh this is actually pretty big. I think I should stitch it one more time. And so lost. So that's what we're going to do today. Let's get stitching, I guess. Are you all ready? Cause, cause I am sure not. Okay, let's do it for real now. Let me tell you, when my foot hit that pedal, it was all worth it. I forgot about everything else. It was just me, my sewing machine, and everyone else against the world. What? No, what? That's not a quote. Okay. The last and honestly my most preferred version is using iron-on hemming tape. So what this does basically, it's something you iron onto your fabric and it will make it more stiff and just stick the two pieces of fabric together. So you fold over the hem over the tape and then just iron it on and then from there you're good. This gives you the cleanest hem and there's no visible threads which is something I really like. However, you can also use this method in addition to the previous one that I mentioned. So after you put this iron-on hemming tape, this will just allow it to be more stiff. And then you stitch it on with the double needle. It's going to be the most professional and you're going to be sure that it's not going to come undone in the wash. So those are all the methods of hemming. You can compare the results side by side. Each of them has their own pros and their own cons. So it's really up to you on what you have and what look do you prefer. This is how mine turned out. And that marks 
the end of our very first Ukai DIY episode and I am so excited for the series because this is really the direction I want to bring my channel towards. So if you want to see more of that, subscribe. If you don't, I don't really mind.